Okay guys, so now I'm here within PF Track, and the first thing I want to do is create a project. To create this, I'm here within the project panel here at the bottom and I can go ahead and just hit create and give it a name. And as you know, I've already given my project an amazing name called Landscape in Hand, which is very creative. So let me give it something similar for the PF Track project. I'll go ahead and give it um, Yellen Hatch underscore PFT. So that basically means the land in, uh, Landscape in Hand project for PF Track. And it goes into the proper directory. And I have the frame rate set, I have the camera preset set to 7D. All these have come in from the actual uh, live footage which I had to take. Next, the disk caching is set to internal, so all of the caching has happening exactly within this folder itself. So if I delete this project, all of the caching is also removed. So now, once these detail details are set, I'll go ahead and hit confirm. I have my project set. Now, I want to bring in my footage. So let me just navigate to the footage. And here, as you can see, I have two different footages. The first one is the actual footage I got in from the camera itself, which is a MOV file. The next one I have here is a TIFF file sequence, which is going to help me in uh, better caching and better read uh, reading because it, the file does not have to be decoded uh, as much as a MOV file has to be. So therefore, let me go ahead and bring in the TIFF sequence. And as soon as I bring this in, PF Track does a couple of things for me. First off, the camera preset uh, is set from the project directly and it's set because the actual aspect ratio of this footage matches that of the camera preset we have set. Also, the frame rate is set to 24. Uh, obviously, when you're working with PF Track, it doesn't really matter what frame rate you're working with. You're just working with the actual frames themselves. Now, I have my footage in. Now, what exactly do I want to do within PF Track? The first thing is I want to get the motion of this object which is held in the hand. So I want this object to give me the complete motion in three dimensional space. So I can go ahead and use user tracks to track these markers which are placed upon this object to get that motion. Another thing to note here is that all these markers which are placed have actually gone ahead and measured the distances between them and placed them exactly to the right distance. Like the two top markers we have here, the white markers are 15 centimeters apart. So that means I also have scale already set within my footage. So I can make use of that. So first thing I want to do now is go ahead and track this footage. So to do that, I need a user track node. So I've added a user track node. And as you can see, the footage is not actually cached in completely, which might slow down my tracking. So I'll go ahead and just press the C button on top, which is going to go quickly cache in my entire footage so it's faster to load. Now, what, how I'm going to show you the tracking is, I'll just go ahead and do a simple track to begin with, which might give certain issues, I'm not sure. So once I've shown you a single track, I'll go ahead and do all the remaining track when I'm fast forwarding the footages. So. Let me go ahead, I'll click create. I'll put a tracking marker on top of this and um, I'll go ahead, set the feature scale to exactly the size which might give me the best results. So now, how exactly am I placing it? First off, when I'm placing this uh, feature, I want it to have enough boundaries on the side so that it does not go, get lost. Like for example, it does not go to one corner or another corner. I don't want it so small that uh, no matter where it moves within the marker, it might be, be slipping, it might not be in the center. I don't want that to happen. So I want at least a little bit of the corners visible so that I get a much centered and proper track. Basically, I want it to be self-correcting. So once I've set this up, I'll also go ahead, reduce the actual search region so that the track is faster. Now, one thing I can do is go ahead and set the search mode from better accuracy to better speed. This will uh, help me get faster results but might not be as accurate. So let me just set it to better speed for now. I'll go ahead and hit track. And as you can see, the tracking marker is pretty much going off screen most of the time. So I can go ahead and turn on center view so it stays exactly within the center of my frame. So let me go ahead and finish tracking this. As you can see, it stops a couple of times. It's no issues. The main thing you have to understand is that the window update is set to starting frame, meaning the first frame where the tracking actually starts from, that is where the track is supposed to, uh, that's what, uh, that's the kind of feature the track is going to be looking for. So now that actually created an issue just now. 
as you can see when I came forward there are two tracking markers there are two tracks which are placed very close to each other and they look almost exactly the same so now what the track is doing is jumping from one to another continuously and that is a absolutely horrible because each of them has a completely different motion and this might give you very bad results so what I'm going to do is come to the point exactly before this track starts jumping and remove all the tracks which are ahead of it so this button is for removing tracks ahead and these for backwards so once I'm there now I can go ahead reuse my search region first so that this other tracking marker is no longer visible within the search region and immediately when I track that should solve but as you can see it did not just solve because the search region was still this was still within the search region so let me go ahead and remove that once more and try to reduce it a bit more track it for a few frames at least and now it's gone far far enough away that I can increase it a bit and track it again so as you can see a simple uh, little tweak of setting the search region properly can actually save you a lot of headache so now let me go ahead and try to finish this solve. Hopefully no more issues with this particular track. Okay, so this entire track is finished and if I scrub through you should be able to see that this particular marker stays exactly dead center, almost dead center throughout. So that's pretty much done. Now I want to go ahead and track some other markers. So I'll go ahead fast forward the footage now and uh, fast forward the tutorial now and uh, start tracking different markers and if I encounter any issues I'll uh, come back to the normal speed explain exactly what I'm doing and then continue on from that. So uh, I'll see you in some time. Uh, there is an issue which I just encountered where this marker is basically passing over the actual object itself and the first thing you would notice is that my tracker is actually moving exactly according to the background in that position. So I don't really want this uh, particular artifact to be taken into consideration. So what I'll do just before the marker I have placed actually passes over the background. I'll remove all the keyframes there, reduce the size of my feature so that the amount of background in the back has been reduced now. So therefore now when I track the uh, any kind of uh, artifact from the background are totally being ignored by this uh, feature. So therefore it's going to stay dead center no matter what happens in the background. So therefore you can just go ahead keep changing these uh, search regions or feature regions as long as you can get the best track possible. It all depends on the particular situation, the kind of footage, the amount of blurring, motion or whatever. So uh, obviously if uh, nothing works in the end, uh, you obviously you'll have to go ahead and do the whole thing manually. I'm tracking the last marker and I've been tracking it in reverse from the last frame and here after I reached about the 200th frame from the back you can see that the actual marker is hidden the marker is no longer visible to be tracked so therefore I want the same tracker which I'm using the tracker number 6 to be used to track the same feature but I don't want to go ahead and create a new one so how exactly do I do this portion because even though there is no marker there the tracking feature or this is still visible you can see there is a red crosshair over here in the tracking region so to avoid this what I can do is go to the last frame which is tracked and hide all of the keyframes which are going to come after this so because I have come in the reverse direction I'll have to remove all of this uh, visibility of this tracker after this frame so I'll just come to this hide section and subtract the height or use a minus height so all of this section the marker is no longer visible so now when I scroll through you can see the marker is no longer visible there is no red cross here there is actually no tracking window itself because the entire thing is invisible now so now I'll just scrub backwards till I get to the point where I can actually see the marker and with the marker actually selected with the tracking uh, tracker actually selected the one which I've been I've been using to track this I'll click on top of it 
and that literally creates the marker once more. So basically only in this section the marker is hidden and again it's visible after it. So this is the easiest way of hiding something. Uh, like if the if the feature is invisible for a while you can go ahead and hide the tracker for a while and again get it visible to go ahead and start tracking. So one of the easiest methods. So I'm almost done with tracking. And there it's done. So now I've gone ahead and finished tracking all of these six markers. The tracker number six is the only one which had to be hidden partially in between the footage. So now I have this whole thing done. The next step is to actually go ahead and do a solve.